Friends, good morning and welcome to our home community. So as those who are physically here, welcome to those online. God bless every home, every business in our old town parish. God bless London Marathon for 21 years ago. was on the starting line. One of the two runners here today. So um, a real picture, if you watch the highlights later on, of those cheering the runners on. It's my prayer. Whether or not you run or how you got here today, you will know the saints cheering us on, praying us on when the saints go marching in. One thing to be encouraged in the Christian life. So may that be true for each of whoever we are today. Welcome to those here for the first time. Mind that two weeks' time is our coronation weekend. Many of you are using these gifts from Bishop Viv. This is also online. I won't go through all of today, but today we are praying around the coronation regalia. And I'll just use uh, these words. The monarch's ring is marked with a cross, and the other objects are each topped with one symbolising the authority of Christ. A dove, the symbol of God the Holy Spirit, Perches on the cross at the top of the rod. Together they remind us that Jesus Christ is king over all. Christ reigns on the cross wearing a crown of thorns, defying the world's expectations, forgiving and loving to the end, dying and rising that we might have life in all its fullness. Coronation is God's gift to us, all of us. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King, to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. You'll see our theme today is we are Easter people. Alleluia is our song. So friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. John 20, 21, that's our Bible verse for the year. If you've missed it, you're new here today. There are cards with that on and also our prayer for the year. We stand to sing our Easter hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King. <coughs>
Gracious God, we thank you for your glorious gospel, good news of grace and love and your salvation. Pray that our lives, our testimonies, would help us to pass the good news on of your presence, your resurrection, love. I will help live each day as if Jesus died yesterday, is risen today, and is coming back tomorrow. Bless our parish, our deanery, and our diocese. For your glory's sake we pray. Amen. Please sit down. Thanks so much, Dean. Thank you, Sue, for your hard work today. Uh, any children who are here do come to the front. Uh, thank you for those who are online. I will continue. So 21 years ago, I ran the London Marathon and uh, wonderful experience. Just a bit rhinoceros in the last little bit, four hours and 37. My sister Anna is here today and she rediscovered this book, The Story of Easter. And if you open this up, it says to Simon, Easter 1965. So if I just turned 60 last July, how old when I got this book? I was just three years old. You all say, ah, oh, what an adorable baby he was in those days. Now, this is a wonderful book, and obviously the children in front of it here. I was three years old, but rereading this, it is clearly in colour. And I'm really grateful to Alex and to Jane for resurrecting our Easter garden, which will be here for the six weeks. So those of you here two weeks ago on Easter Day would have seen this, but this reminds us of the Easter story. But today, it's not about a run, it's about a walk, and it's a very famous story. But interestingly, in the book I received when I was three years old, it tells in three quarters of the book about the events of the first Easter day, but then there is a paragraph which says this. Later, two of the disciples came to the apostles in Jerusalem, saying that Jesus had appeared to them on their way to the village of Emmaus, and they had not realised who he was until he blessed the bread at supper and had them vanish. They had come straight back to Jerusalem to tell the news. While they were talking, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be unto you. They were terrified, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Jesus showed them the nail marks on his hands and his feet and ate with them. I can't remember reading this book, but I do remember that as a child, the events of Easter changed people's lives. And I want to say with this book here, this is a book in colour. And often we're reading a Bible with clearly black print on our page. But it's my prayer, children, and all ages we are today, is to become alive in colour for us. And more about that in a moment. But if I had the children in front of me right now, one of the things about the road to Mayor's story, you'll hear but later on, is that for these disciples, Clopas, and the other one is not named. I want to imagine for today, when you hear this story, you are the other follower. So Clopas is named, but you are the other follower. What would it might be to do to join the dots? Do you remember, children, joining the dots as a child? Yes, exactly. Well, did you know that your vicar was an amazing artist? No, you didn't know that. But I have drawn here eight dots. And I'm, I'm going to just show you here, my dear friend, if I join the dots. And you'll be saying, wow, it's amazing what happens. So I'm joining the dots. I'm sorry it's not a large picture. One down to there, two to there, three to there, four to there, five to there, six to there, seven to there, eight to there. Now, 
difficult. Nine to there, 10 to there, 11 to there, 12 to there. And there is an amazing box in 3D. And the picture is in your face of the joy. You see the risen Lord Jesus Christ and this amazing box. I wish you could see Esme's amazing face just now, because that is a resurrection face. So may, as you hear this story, may whatever your dots are, may you be helped to join these dots together, see a fuller picture of the amazing Easter story, which we're part of here in Swindon. Thank you, Lord, for Esme's wonderfully joyful face. And we pray for the joy of the Lord in this place. We pray for every child who lives here in Swindon, for their many questions. We pray you'd help us to hear those questions and to bless them and support them in their school and in their homes and in church when they come to Messy Church. And we ask you, Lord, that this amazing Easter will become colour for us this day. We pray for your blessing upon this service, every child in our town. Keep us close to you and close to each other. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And you'll have a picture at home of you afterwards, Esme. So you can have a picture. There we go. Thank you so much for your encouragement. Thank you. The more open we are, the more we receive. We pray for openness to new discoveries on not only the marathon or the Emmaus Road on our journeys, that we might be open to what Jesus wants to give us. So we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world he gave, his only begotten Son, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins of a sincere and true heart. Together we pray. Most merciful God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing the Gloria. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father, to God be glory forever, to God be glory forever, Alleluia. Glory to God, glory to God, 
Glory to Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Christ Jesus. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the Spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. And the prayer being offered in this Easter season. We're particularly praying for those saying this prayer in Ukraine, in Myanmar, in Syria, in great danger for their lives. We are Easter people. Alleluia is our song in all circumstances. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us. Proclaim to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Is he seated? Anthony, happy birthday for yesterday. Seven and oh, many congratulations. A round of applause, I think. Very good. And uh, Anthony's standing for election next week for the PCC, Deanery Synod, but... Anthony and Moira, who are presiding today at Communion, remind us to the first day of the rest of your life and reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the action of the Holy Spirit in Moira and Anthony as they've moved here this last year, but all of us to see forward what is God doing now in our generation here in Swindon. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 2, verses 14a and 36 to 41. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added to their number. This is the word of the Lord. Turn the clock forward. The child, Simon, three years old, got that book. When I was 16 years old in my youth group, this uh, song was published. And it came back to me a lot during this last week, hence the reason why I was singing it just now. And remember what I've asked you to do. As you hear in a moment me read the gospel 
reading, the unnamed follower is you. Would imagine yourself with Clopas as you hear the story. But the chorus of this song says this, O oh Jesus, we love you, so we gather here. Join our hearts in unity and take away our fear. Whatever the fear might be for you this day, the first line says this, Jesus, stand among us at the meeting of our lives. We stand to sing, Jesus, stand among us at the meeting of our lives. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord and the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Friends, hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Luke 24, beginning at verse 13. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognising him. And Jesus said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Clopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. 
Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. When they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. They did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, how it had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please sit down. I wonder how open you feel you are now to receiving God's treasure. God's gifts. You know, perhaps you remember being three years old when you first heard the Easter story. Maybe there's a particular song you heard when you were 16 years old which reminded you this is actually not just for children but for adults. Maybe you long, as I got here, a wonderful letter from the congregation not here today, longing for an experience of the risen Lord Jesus. Let's pray. So this is the prayer used each day at Lord's Healing Community in France. Lord, that I might see. Lord, that I might listen. Lord, that I might walk with you and my neighbour this day and every day. Amen. We are Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. So wonderful to have be part of a multi-ethnic community here today. Remember, Alleluia means in every language it means praise God. And as you just be aware today and uh, what that might mean, we are Easter people. Alleluia is our song. In troubled and challenging days, we are Easter people. In the days after his resurrection, today's gospel takes us on the road with two of Jesus' followers to a moment of revelation in the presence of the risen Christ. Clopas, it might have been his wife, certainly a follower, side of Jesus, but for today, imagining you are with Clopas. 
Living Lord Jesus, as I draw near to you now in prayer, would you draw near to me? Surprise me again as you surprise so many others in those sacred days between your resurrection and ascension to heaven. In this incredible incident, Jesus' questions draw out the disciples' story. What he hears is saturated with sorrow, dashed hopes and confusion. A number of us met here on Wednesday night living in faith and brought out questions. One of them was, where are all the children? Well, they're clearly in Swindon, but they're not here today. And uh, there's always deep sadness in my heart when there are very few children, but I thank God that I've met this week and all they remind me of passing the baton on. But it's not easy, and let's uh, be praying for those very special uh, children, boys and girls across our town. Today we join Jesus on the road to Emmaus. It's late in the day, the sun is setting, and we imagine the changed expressions of those talking and walking together. How were the companions to make sense of these contradictory stories of death and resurrection? To stay nothing of their own jumbled thoughts and feelings. And maybe we come today with jumbled thoughts and feelings. It's quite hard to see how it's all going to work its way through in our country and our town. And as you cast your vote uh, on May the 5th, sorry, uh, yes, May, May, May the 4th, council elections, how you're holding together the issues locally here. But what a breathtaking, life-changing encounter this is. Breathtaking, life-changing encounter. I'd have given anything to have taken part in that to our Lectio Divina. You know, it was an amazing experience running the London Marathon those 21 years ago. But how Jesus slowly, methodically unpacked all the scriptures concerning himself. How he joined the dots, the dots of the followers' experience, their concerns, and gave them a fuller picture. Two particular things that strike me as extraordinary here. First of all, Jesus didn't say, Hi, it's me, but took so much time, some hours, to contextualise and he legitimise his own resurrection in the story of God, which is why he speaks to our minds and our hearts. <coughs> the ultimate miracle of the resurrection wasn't enough. Even after the resurrection, this encounter, the Bible was still Jesus' ultimate source of authority. The pattern in scriptures uncovered revealed divine way of suffering and glory, same experience as Israel's Messiah. So friends, in preparation this week, I'm challenged by the way Jesus expounds scripture concerning himself, reframing the traveller's experiences. When I think of what's been said to me this week, what would it be like to reframe traffic experience or help them to reframe their own experiences? This book, he seems to be saying, is all about me. Theologians call this the Christological hermeneutic, bit of a mouthful at uh, 25 past 10 on a Sunday morning. It simply means that we're supposed to read the Bible in the light of, through the lens of the resurrected Christ. Yesterday, Hugo took pictures of a wedding here in Swindon, and seeing his pictures afterwards, what would it be that we read the Bible through the lens of the resurrected Jesus Christ? We understand the Old Testament and New Testament epistles in the light of the Gospels, so I ask the question, do I tend to be more impressed by miracles than the Bible's overall witness? Have I lost my delight in God's 
living word this Easter season? Do I defer to its authority even when it flies in the face of my cultural preferences, expectations? I ask this same Jesus in this Easter season to ignite in me, and I pray in each one of us, the wonder of his living word, making me hungry to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest. We're getting together uh, Bibles in many different languages, some of them at the back of the church there. There are 3,589 language groups still waiting for scriptures in their own tongue. I've had the privilege, you know, to give our 10 Bibles uh, in Farsi to those dear sisters and brothers now in Christ, baptised this last year. Seeing the tears in their eyes is in their own language. They can read the Gospel of Jesus Christ. One billion people, friends, are still living in Bible poverty. We know about poverty, but Bible poverty. Again, Esme's face when she saw my join the dots picture. But the joy received today by people reading for the first time the Bible, maybe in a hotel, maybe in a prison, in a school. You may want to pray for the Illuminations, which is an initiative across churches, Bible societies, that every person would have the Bible in their own language, 2033, which would be 2,000 years since the resurrection. But secondly, we can rejoice in the story's dramatic ending. Did not our hearts burn within us? I remember 21 years ago hitting the wall at 19.5 miles. And um, I can remember then people, come on, I had my name Simon, which uh, had been given me a particular shirt. I was running various charities in Swindon. But I wonder this phrase, heart burn, which we all have had at various times in our lives, where we've overexerted ourselves. But when did our heart burn within us at the wonders of God's living word, or maybe a song or an experience? Or did we pray today we would experience that expectancy of a burning expression of God's resurrection in this service. Maybe the couple on the Emmaus Road, Clopas, I'm suggesting, are so remembering the words of Jeremiah when they chose this powerful phrase. Jeremiah 20 verse, now what about this for Bible verse? If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. Well, Jeremiah 20, verse 9. So friends, secondly, miracle of resurrection was not enough. They also needed the Bible, but here at the end of this story, we see that the Bible itself was not enough. Two disciples also needed a moment a supernatural revelation. And this takes place significantly when the disciples urge Jesus, stay with us. Share a meal with us. Share our lives. When did you last say those prayers? Stay with me, Lord Jesus. Invitation two weeks today to share a meal for the big lunch, coronation weekend. As we said, fellowship of faith to share our lives. That's our joys and our sorrows. I have here, as I said, an amazing response to one of the questions of the Lent course. Federal words, what does Christian faith mean for me? Someone I've known incredibly well for 25 years, and yet this particular story gives me a whole different lens into that person's life her longing for an experience of the living God to bring church going into colour. And I'm praying for her in this service right now. It's in that simple relational moment of feasting 
as the bread is blessed, broken and given, living Lord Jesus is revealed and received. Can I encourage you to accept the invitation to come forward to receive communion or a blessing today? But come forward asking your heart will burn within you with the power of the risen Lord Jesus with you in your experience. That as you go from this place, you're saying, stay with me, Lord Jesus. What I experienced here in this place, breaking of bread in the blessing, may that go ahead of me wherever we are. We are Easter people and Alleluia is our song. Let's be quiet and pray together. So in the silence, I invite you to pray that you would have experience as Clopas did, unnamed follower, could be yourself, of the risen Lord Jesus. And your heart might so burn, not with a heartburn in the middle of a marathon, but a passion to see Jesus more clearly, to love Jesus more dearly and follow Jesus more nearly. You'll be aware that King Charles III loves the Book of Common Prayer, and on the 7th of May, we'll have a Book of Common Prayer service at 8 o'clock. And this is... Thomas Cramner's famous prayer, which sums up what we're trying to say this morning. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life which thou hast given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, stand among us at the meeting of our lives. Please stand. light of those words, let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So often as we pray, <coughs> what was black and white becomes colour. As we sit in now, Nicola leads us in our prayers that we may have colour on this resurrection journey. Let us pray as we sit. Let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen our bishops, clergy and lay ministers, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, 
and reveal your glory in the world. Especially we pray for Bishop Lee and Liz as they retire next Sunday at the service at the Patton Church. We also pray for the diocesan event for us all, which we are hosting this afternoon in Christchurch, called Everyday Faith Together, that we would learn much about our own calling to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Father God, this morning we bring before you in prayer all those who you are calling to be nominated as members of our new PCC or as Deanery Synod representatives. Help them to hear your voice and to be guided by you. Give them the grace and skills to seek your vision for this parish and help us all to be led by them. We pray for our annual church meeting next week, that this will be a time of celebration <coughs> and thanksgiving for the life of this parish and our wider church community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Bless and guide Charles our King. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that people may honour one another and seek the common good. We pray for the guidance of your Holy Spirit as we listen to all the political parties, as they encourage us to vote for them in the local elections in May. Guide us, Lord, that we may all choose wisely, and that those elected will govern justly and with wisdom for the benefit of all. We also pray for the peacemakers in our war-torn world, and that their words of peace and reconciliation will be heard through the noise of war and hatred. We especially lift up to you the countries of the Sudan and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Father God, as your people in this parish, help us to love and serve our families, neighbours and friends. We pray especially for all our activities over the weekend of the coronation, especially our Partnership of Churches Thanksgiving service and for the coronation big lunch on the Sunday, that they will be times of great fellowship and joy together. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Loving God, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, especially those we know who are suffering from physical pain, mental illness, who are in hospital undergoing treatment or in a care home. We remember today Pam Ings, John Day, Violet Williams, Sandy Rule, Elaine Gilding, Rose Lake, Michelle Batner, Alex David Spratt, Stephanie Dexter, Charles Ferrant, Joe Henry, and all those we know who are in need of God's healing. We also pray for all those who are grieving following the death of a loved one. And especially we pray today for the friends and family of Hazel Herbert, the Reverend Michael West, Michael Scott, Keith Defter, and Brian Andrews. Lord, for all who are hurting today, we ask for your comfort, healing, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Please stand for the peace. and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Pass that peace to one another now. Absolutely. This may well be the first time this hymn has been sung in Christ Church. Uh, very uh, special words. Um, Tim, it's your special choice if it goes well. I get the credit goes badly, I'll blame you, all right? But it will go perfectly well. So, uh, lights of the minds that know him, may Christ be light to mine. Really entering into the Emmaus Road in these very deep words.
We shall remember Jesus. We shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to this table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. Amen. You gave your Son Jesus to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death, and so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and singing. and bless you loving father through jesus christ our lord and as we obey his command send your holy spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son on the night before he died he had supper with his friends and taking bread he praised you he broke the bread gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you. He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes again in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us into your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, So we kneel, so we sit and join together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. This day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us in into temptation. But deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, which in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy as our comes under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose mercy is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our soul washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Welcome to those here for the first time. Please all come forward and receive communion or a simple prayer of blessing. Works well here if the choir come first of all. The choir will be singing the anthem, O for a Closer Walk, very appropriate with the Emmaus Road in mind. When you come forward and receive communion, you want to have gluten free wafers, or like a wine have available for you. Just encourage you to be saying Amen as you receive the bread and the wine. There's no intention now either the bread and the wine, or just the bread, or a blessing. But that word, Amen, means, yes, please. And we're praying that our hearts be strangely warmed as they burn within us for Jesus' gospel. May God bless you to receive from him on this Easter day.
living God, your son, made you, your son Jesus made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see Jesus in all his redeeming work. He who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who in the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you so much indeed. This afternoon, Everyday Faith, a wonderful title. This is open to anybody, half past two, workshops, four o'clock, is a dance and commissioning service, Jean Christopher will be preaching. And then at half past six, our informal worship being led by John Cheek from Long Community Church, and we're in for a real treat tonight. So four o'clock, half past six, our two evening services this day. Reminder, next weekend is the APCM. The annual reports are available online, but also the hard copies available back at the church. Do be praying, especially around the always difficult language how we met our goals for the last year but how God's faithfulness was seen this last year and the plans for this coming year and as you look at that it's really very exciting to see how God is leading us in a whole variety of new ways what we'll a stand for election and it's exciting to see a number of people new doing that for next week then do I have forms are available for uh, PCC Union Silver and for Church Wardens lighter that Jim and Nitin are standing again this year. Also mention of the coronation weekend, if you are new here today, please pick up one of the, the leaflets. We have a new batch of those. So do take the risk. At the moment, we are somewhere under 100 for the big lunch on Sunday. We want to see a really good number of people for that lunch. Uh, the community service, half past seven on the Friday. But a whole opportunity is to invite friends to spend time with us, to celebrate the coronation the big screening and also with the party Westminster um, at Windsor Castle on the Sunday evening. That's available after the service. Please stay refreshments to celebrate Anthony your birthday yesterday. Congratulations. But also to get to know each other and to shower reflections on the Emmaus Road together. And now very appropriately our final hymn. We have a gospel to proclaim good news for all. Throughout the earth, we stand to sing this hymn.
said, Our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, rest upon each of you and all those for whom you care and pray, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.